Good to see you. Happy Sunday to you. I've been, uh, you know, praying and listening this week about, um, you know, what is it I need to learn and what is it I need to share. And um, I, I came into an awareness that um, I have a focus in many ways in ministry, I feel, that, that, um, that seems to be a theme that for me runs through what I do in terms of ministry. And it comes from um, a quote of Jesus when he said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And I absolutely know that we are here to experience all the good that God has in store for us and to express all of the possibility and potential that God has created us to experience and to express. In Scripture we read it is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. To me this means that we are meant to know and to experience the fullness of God's love, of God's presence, of God's life, God's abundance, wisdom, peace, power. Do you realize that the divine intelligence right now and substance of God is, is in every way trying to pour in and through you, in and through your energy, in and through your consciousness, yes, even in and through your physical body, that there is something working to pour a blessing in and through every aspect of your being. It's trying now to bless us in, with unlimited life and health and abundance and wisdom and peace and power. And it's a wonder. It's a wonder. And one of the ways I was thinking about the human heart, and the human heart is such a wonder because it's, if there was one word that described the functions of the human heart, it would be to flow. Think about it. Flow. And as we're go growing through life on our spiritual path, we go through lots of different experiences in life. <coughs> And sometimes we're going along and things are fine and things are going well in life and we all of a sudden find ourselves stuck. Ever felt stuck? And you have you feeling some area of your life maybe where you're feeling some stuckness going on in your life? We all go through that, and it's, a, it's an important thing for us to recognize. It's not something that's uh, new or different. It's not something that is, and it's not something that is necessarily uh, uh, permanent. But it's also oftentimes a challenge when we find ourselves that place of feeling stuck. I, uh, you know, there's an old saying in the South, you know, you're, you know, stuck between a rock and a hard place. You ever been stuck between a rock and a hard place? Yeah. I think we all have. And, I find that this last week, there were some things that I was really, and it's actually been more than this week, but I would say it's actually been maybe for a month or so now, feeling some stuckness in different ways and different energies in my life. And, and I wanted to kind of look at that and just kind of say, okay, well, what is it about that I really need to pay attention to? Um, so as we're growing through life, it's sometimes we get in those places where we feel stuck and we seem to reach a plateau or we're stuck in somehow in a difficult situation or place and we're not really quite clear on what, what to do or what direction to take. Sometimes we find that we're repeating a pattern. Anybody know about repeating patterns over and over again? When, when you, especially when you thought, that's, oh, I'm done with that, you know? <laughs> the ones you thought you were done with, they seem to pop up again in your life and your experiences. So um, it's important, I think, valuable for us to recognize that even in those times that God's blessings and God's flow are still always available and always flowing. J. Sig Paulson, he was a wonderful minister at Unity in the, temp uh, the pyramid many years ago at, in Houston, Texas, a powerful spiritual teacher for Unity for many years. He had this wonderful little poem that said, the universe is one, so complicated yet so intricately done that a song in the heart and a smile on the face tickles the atoms of outermost space. 
I love that poem because it really does speak to the effect that goes on in our lives when we are working with the flow and also when we find ourselves in a place of, of stuckness. It's important for us to recognize that there's something happening, there's a connection going on with us with the divine. We always still have it. We're always still a part of it. We're always still connected to the divine flow. And yet we can also operate in a way that doesn't seem like we're in that place. And we can have experiences that don't seem like we're connected in that way. And we can seem like we're somehow out of that divine flow. The university operates in circles. You realize that? The universe operates in circles. Think about the galaxies and the planets, how they rotate. Well, I thought about that, but uh, there's actually a, a little different awareness about that. It's not just circles, but it's actually spirals. The universe operates in spirals. And so even though you keep coming back around to the same thing over and over again, you're not coming around to it in the same place that you were before. And that's actually a good thing to know. It's really helpful to recognize that you're coming back to those experiences, but you're not necessarily on the same plane as you were when you first experienced it. And so that's really, to me, reassuring to recognize that, yeah, this is a pattern here, but it's not the same. I'm not, from, I'm not in the same place that I was when I experienced it before. And that, to me, is actually helpful and, and freeing. And I, if you think about that and take some time to reflect on this understanding that how our universe operates, even the, the rotation of the planets, I remember seeing a wonderful graphic on the Internet not too long ago, and I was hoping to really recapture that, but I couldn't find it again. But it shows that the, that the rotation of the planets, we see the rotation of the planets uh, that look like they're going around like this, but a more accurate representation of it is that they are going around like this in a spiral and that we are not necessarily, because if you think about the, the sun itself is actually moving and so you can't say that the planets are simply revolving around the sun. The whole thing is revolving around a spiral. It's a great image to hold and awareness to understand that even though you do come back to seeing and experiencing things sometimes all over again, you're not doing it from the same place as you had before. So God's blessings are always, always flowing. I thought about this idea of circulation. We are a part of a, of a di divine circulation whether we're recognizing it or not. And the word circulation, it occurs to me that the word circulation also is connected to the word affluence. You know what affluence means? You know, in our culture, affluence really does mean more than just having enough. It means flowing with whatever is necessary and needed. It is being able to be uh, in the flow. We think about affluence as being those who are absolutely, you know, in a, in a material sense wealthy, but affluence really has to do with being in the flow. True affluence is really being in that divine flow and being, experiencing those blessings. And so... When you think about this idea of when we get stuck, we have a tendency to think that, and the image that I sometimes get is that it's kind of like we think that the divine flow is like a stove pipe that comes in, you know, from up above, from the divine, and comes in and through us, and then comes out through us. And that's a fine image. It's a great image. But where we run into a challenge is we think that when we're stuck, it's because somehow the stovepipe is then turned off here, coming in. But I'm going to suggest to you that when it gets really stuck is not when it gets turned off here, because it never gets turned off here. It's always available to flow in. Where it gets turned off is here. It gets turned off and the flowing out. And so part of our work is to pay attention and notice when we're in that space of blocking that flow. And the way we're blocking that flow is that in some ways we are blocking it from moving through us and moving through our energy, our consciousness, our awareness. Now we may not always know how or why that's the case. Sometimes we're pretty blind to how it is that we're blocking the flow. When we're stuck, the flow is stopped from, through our energy, our thoughts, our feelings, our consciousness. 
And so um, I came across uh, an awareness about this a while back from a lady by the name, she actually was an actress for many years, and she's now a, a, a law of attraction teacher and teaches some really wonderful, uh, was just some great insights for me. She, she calls it the three C's, the three C's of, of uh, what happens when we are stuck, you might say. When we're, when we're manifesting, but we're not manifesting abundance. And when we find ourselves not experiencing abundance or not experiencing something that we want to, some blessing that we want to experience in our lives, there's three C's that, that uh, we automatically tend to naturally uh, fall into. And they're just, it's not a wrong or a bad, it's just something to notice and pay attention to. It's really valuable for us to pay attention to what it is that's getting us stuck, but also what's helping to keep us stuck. The three C's are complaining, cutting off, and believe it or not, constricting and conserving. So I want to talk just briefly about each of those because one of the things that happens when we tend to feel like that we're not in the flow is we automatically look for who to blame. You know, it's just one of those things that we do. We try to find the cause and we nearly always look for that cause out here. Sometimes we think it's God doing it to us. It's not God doing it to us. God is always pouring blessings through us. So we covered that point. But when we start complaining, we're automatically looking for something out here that seems to be blocking the flow. And we're saying that it's them. It's either the husband, the spouse, the children, the, the boss, the you fill in the blank. What is it that we're complaining about? Because I can assure you the moment that we're complaining about it, we're in the block. And we are a part of the block. We're creating the block. So it's really valuable for us to notice that little voice inside that's trying to make somebody else responsible for us not being in the flow. Believe me, I've spent many, many hours practicing this. <laughs> and it, it, it's, you know, it I have, it, you know, it works incredibly well to block the flow. I mean, really, I mean, over the years, I've certainly had, uh, I can remember a very powerful time in my life. One of the most powerful uh, experiences for my life where I was about this far from being homeless. Maybe, maybe, maybe this far from being homeless, actually. And I realized in that time, I got lessons somehow. I was rereading some of my prosperity works and, and just got really clear that one of the things that I was doing was spending a lot of time and energy being angry, frustrated, resentful for those who I thought were getting in the way of my flow. It's confession time here, folks. I was. I was like, boy, I was, it was them. And I knew that I had to shift that. And so I'm not going to get into all the shifting just yet, but I want to be aware that there is something going on, whether it be conscious or not, where we're making something or someone out here in the world responsible for our flow. And the moment that we do that, we've given power over to where the source isn't. Does that make sense? And so a big piece of our work is to notice when we're in that energy, when we're in that place of complaining. Now, it's important to understand, <clears throat> when you are able to say something to someone who can make a change and make a difference, that's not necessarily complaining. When you see something that's not flowing or not working, it's not necessarily complaining to point out the truth of that experience. I read something today of <clears throat> Tony Robbins who said, uh, you know, it's important to, to, uh, to acknowledge the problem, but it's more important to shift your energy from the problem to the solution to give more energy to the solution than you do to the problem. So yes, you pay attention, you notice that there's a problem, but the moment that you try to make someone else then responsible for that, then you are actually putting yourself in the, in the role of being the victim, and you're giving them the power over your flow. It doesn't work. Well, I take that back. It actually does work, but not the way that you want it to, <laughs> right? So the second one that we do is we automatically tend to cut ourselves off. 
we tend to turn, we isolate, we tend to block, we tend to uh, turn inward in a way that's not necessarily turning inward to the source, but turning inward to what's the best way to say it? I think we'd move into our little hideout. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You got that little inner hideout where you think that, you know, you just have to keep everybody out here you know, and, you know, and don't let anybody in or let anything out for that matter. We cut ourselves off from others. We cut ourselves off from, and we actually, by doing so, we're actually also cutting ourselves off from our, our source. We're cutting ourselves off from our connections. And so the very act of cutting ourselves off is a block in the flow. So cutting ourselves off is not going to move us out of that block. Cutting ourselves off is actually going to enhance that flow. So we also really need to pay attention to how we do that. How do I, how do I, res, how do I, had a, one of my good friends that was in the Course in Miracles group that I was leading at one point, used to have this phrase that really was a great phrase and he would always say, he would ask himself the question, he would just say this phrase, avoiding connection. It was really a question. Avoiding connection? Avoiding connection? We do, don't we? When we find ourselves in that place where we don't sense or feel we're connecting or experiencing the blessings, we're automatically moving into that little place where we are avoiding connection. And so part of our work is to reverse that. To reverse that, that tendency. Now, some of these are, seem counterintuitive. We think that that's how we're supposed to protect ourselves. But in reality, it does just the opposite. It really cuts us off from being a part of the flow. And then the third way that we have a tendency to um, perpetuate being stuck is that we move into constriction and conserving. It seems strange that when you feel like you don't have enough, you feel like you're supposed to then conserve whatever you've got. You gotta hold on to it, right? And you gotta find ways of, you know, making sure you, you know, don't let go of anything because you gotta conserve. Well, and the energy and the message that you're sending out, the vibration that you're putting out is what? Don't have enough. And this amazing, wonderful, beautiful universe this amazing, wonderful, divine intelligence will reflect back to you that energy of I don't have enough. It will basically say, I love you so much that I'm going to give you all that you don't have enough that you want. <laughs> it's obvious that you want more, you don't have enough, because that's what your energy you're holding. And so if you're holding the energy of I don't have enough and you start moving into the constricting and conserving mode, you're automatically telling the universe, I want some more of this, I don't have enough. <laughs> Think about it for a moment. The law of attraction works this way. It's that literal, in all honesty. Um, I once, I remember getting this insight that... Um, that the universe loves you, God loves you so much that the universe will let you fall flat on your face if that's the energy that you're holding for it. Because it loves you so much, it's not going to tell you no in that way. It will let you go through painful experiences. Not because it hates you, not because it's bad, not because it's mean, because it is the creative power and flow of the universe working through you. It is a loving presence that will let you experience pain if you need that in order to recognize, I don't want pain anymore. And I'm sorry if you don't like the way that works, but that is how the universe works. What you send out is what you are bringing back. What I send out is what I'm bringing back. So I have to really pay attention to the energies that I'm putting out there in the universe. So, so that's the three C's. When we're stuck, I remember there's a little phrase that I, I got from Eric Butterworth. I'm even familiar with Eric Butterworth. Eric Butterworth was one of, the, one of my greatest teachers, I'll tell you, and 
had such a great opportunity to meet with him a number of times that really just, uh, not, not as long as I would like to have, I'll be honest with you, I would love to have spent a lot more time with this amazing, brilliant spiritual teacher. But one of the things I got from his wonderful work, Spiritual Economics, is a, just a simple little phrase. And the simple little phrase is this, when you feel stuck, something's got to give. And guess who that something is? <laughs> so let's talk about the five G's. Something's got to give. We're talking about the energy, the power of giving. And the five G's are this. I'll make a little note. Feel free. This is a good one. Good little reminder. We're going to talk a little bit about each one of them for a second. The five G's are for giving. The second G is giving thanks. The third G is giving way. The fourth G is giving up. And the fifth G is giving of. I want to talk just a little bit about each one of those because, see, number one, I think, is forgiving. When you're stuck, I can guarantee you there is in some way that one of these things is going on in our energy and our consciousness. We're blocked in one of these activities. We're, one of, we're blocked in one of these ways of giving. And if we want to shift out of being stuck, we need to move back into that energy of giving in one of these five ways. Maybe several of these five ways. Maybe all of these five ways. But forgiving is really an important one. When I'm stuck... I have a resentment or a grudge that I have not released. I have a wound that I have not healed. To give, to forgive means to give in place of, to give for, to give love in place of anger, resentment, frustration, fear, whatever. Um, and one of my favorite definitions of forgiveness is giving up all hope of a better yesterday. Shall I say it again? It's giving up all hope of a better yesterday. It's trying to quit get, getting whatever happened to be different than what it was. And the way you do that is in your own giving, in your forgiving. You give love for that experience. You give love to that experience. You shift your energy about that experience, and it shifts for you. And in the very act of doing that, you're shifting your energy into the energy of flow, into the energy of giving. Make sense? See, we hold on to our wounds and our resentments because however our, uh, somehow our ego thinks that, that it will protect us from having that experience to happen to us again. We think if I forgive, well, it's just going to happen again. Well, the reality is if you don't forgive, you can bet it's going to happen again. <laughs> Because you're holding on to that same energy. And you're trying to protect yourself from that energy with the same energy. Does that make sense? However, we know that what we hold on to our, in our consciousness is what we will create. And so, if this is true, aren't we more likely to create more of the same by holding on to the judgments and resentments? Josh Billings once said, there is no revenge so complete as forgiveness. How's that one? There's no revenge so complete as forgiveness. So whatever you're giving out is what you're going to get back. So if you think that through forgiving your, uh, you know, Medwin Gaines, one of the things I, one of her things I quote often, she says, if you think you're done forgiving, if you're still in a body, you're not. So it's an ongoing process. And, you know, we talked about the whole Ho'oponopono practice, and that's a big piece of that, is just being in that process of continually forgiving and being in forgiveness. So the second one is to give thanks. Give thanks. There's a causative power in the energy of giving thanks. Do you realize that? We have a tendency to think that we simply give thanks because of, of in reaction or response to receiving something. 
But I'm going to suggest to you that you receive something because you're in the energy of giving thanks. The more you're in the energy of giving thanks, the more you're likely to open yourself up to those wonderful opportunities to give thanks, those things that come to you that are attracted to you through the very activity and energy of giving thanks. We're focusing our awareness on the good, and therefore we're creating more of that good in our energy and our life. Charles Fillmore said, praise is the highest form of prayer. Praise is acknowledging the good in raising the vibrational level of our consciousness to be in harmony with the good that already exists in that experience. It's raising our consciousness and our awareness in such a way that we're vibrating in tune with in the harmony of the good that already exists. Isn't that a great awareness? I just love that. I mean, we're moving into the frequency of the blessing by the very act of giving thanks, even when you can't see the blessing. In fact, sometimes it's even more important and powerful to be able to give thanks in those times and circumstances when you really can't see the good in the circumstance and situation. See, gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but according to Cicero, it is the parent of all others. I remember, I have a story that I've shared a few times with you, and I'll share it again because it just, it's still one of my great life lessons. There was a, a I was getting ready to go into ministerial school, and one of my prayers was to go into ministerial school and, I, uh, and not have any payments that I had to, you know, pay on and things like that. I wanted to be unencumbered in that way. And about the only real payment that I had left, I'd pretty much paid everything off, and the only one I had left was my car payment, and I had a little Subaru Brat, and um, remember me talking about my little Subaru Brat? Some of you were here before. So I had this wonderful little Subaru Brat, which I loved, and um, I was, um, it was the last day, I remember the last day I was, it was the day I needed, I had to pay my insurance payment that day, and I just had been able to manifest what I needed that day to pay my insurance payment. And I remember uh, driving, I was on my way to work, and I decided to swing by the insurance office where I bought my insurance, and I was just going to pay them that day, and um, so I paid them the insurance, and I was heading off to work, and I was driving along, and I stopped at a stoplight, and the lady behind me didn't. Oh. <laughs> and it smacked right into the back of my little, beautiful little Subaru Brat and crunched up the back end of it. And, um, and you know, my first response was kind of like, uh, you know, a little, I was upset, and I thought, oh, no, I can't, you know, can't believe it, you know, that kind of thing. Moved into some complaining, you know. I was, uh, but then I remembered a wonderful lesson that I got from one of my, from the Unity minister at the Unity in Little Rock, Earl Anderson, and one of the lessons that he taught that has really always been valuable for me, and just a little another little catchphrase that really helps me is, I can't wait to see that's go the good that's going to come out of this. <laughs> in fact, I had a bumper sticker on the back of my car from Unity in Little Rock that had that saying on it. And when I walked around the car, I was reminded by that bumper sticker, oh, yeah, I can't wait to see the good that's going to come out of this. <laughs> and so I started giving thanks. I'm going, okay, God, I can't wait to see the good that's going to come out of this. And I started saying, okay, thank you. I don't know what it is, but I know there's a blessing here. And the, the blessing for me was this. The lady said, you know, what's the problem? You know, whatever, I want you to get an estimate. I'd rather not have this on my insurance. I will go ahead and just write you a check for whatever is needed to fix the car. And I trusted her. I said, okay, that's what we're going to do. So I went and got an estimate and got the estimate, told her, the, sent her the estimate. She wrote me back, sent a check for the amount, and it happened to be just the amount I needed to pay off the Subaru Brat. And so I thought, okay, now what do I do here? What I prayed for was to not have any payments. Subaru Brat was running fine. It didn't look real pretty, but it was, it was running fine. So I decided I'm going to just pay it off. And I paid off, and I didn't have any payments while, the whole time I was going through a ministerial program. And I drove that little Subaru Brat all the way through my ministerial program. In fact, on the way driving up to Unity Village, I stopped at a truck stop, and there was this wonderful little bumper sticker that was in the form of a Band-Aid that said, Ouch. And I just put that across 
the back of my little Subaru Brat, and I tell you, everybody in town knew that Subaru Brat because it had that little Band-Aid and ounce on the back of it. And then when I was ready to leave, I actually sold that Subaru Brat to some, one of my friends, and they drove it for about five years after that. So, <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't always work out the way that you necessarily implant it, but if you shift your energy into the experience of gratitude, you will begin to see the possibilities of good that in those circumstances and situations. If I had simply stayed in the energy of complaining and griping and anger and frustration and resentment or whatever, I would not have seen those possibilities. I absolutely know that. And they would not have unfolded in the way that it, they did. And so it, our work is to shift our awareness. It's to, it's to move into that energy of, of gratitude. So the third way that we need to give, the third G, is giving way. Giving way. That's a really valuable insight to have. When I want some good, I define exactly what that good is in my life. I get clear about my desires and my intentions. I think it's important to be focused and to have an in focus on what it is that you really do want to manifest in your experience in life. Uh, you know, I've had teachers who say, just leave it completely up to the universe, and that's fine. I, I, I have no problem with that. But my experience has been the more clear you can be about what it is that you want, the more likely the universe is going to hear that intention and that desire. But at the same time, it's important for us to, one, not get attached to what it is that we intend, not get attached to our goals, not to get attached to the, the desires, but to hold them in love and light and a trust and a faith that you will experience that or something even greater. Let me say a little bit about the energy of attachment. It's really valuable to really understand the energy of attachment. When, you've, when you set a desire and intention out in the universe of something that you want to experience more of, whether it be health or abundance or love or whatever it might be, I think it's okay and valuable to get a clear image and picture. And I, I personally like doing treasure mapping where I put pictures on the paper and, you know, and it give me the opportunity of visual, the ability to image and, and to visualize. But what I've learned over the years is it's so important to not get attached to having that be exactly the way that I think it's supposed to be. And so when I do my prayers, I always put this or something even better. Because attachment, you see, whether we realize it or not, when we set out a desire for something in our lives and we get attached to that being the way we think it's supposed to be, what we're really saying to the universe is, I'm afraid I'm not going to have what I desire. Let me say that again. When we create this desire and we get attached to it, we're putting out the energy and the vibration of fear that we won't get it. It's a kind of a push-me-pull-me kind of thing. You know, we, we want something, we have a desire for it. If you can stay in the clarity of having the energy of desire and let go of any concern or fear, whether it actually happens or not, let go of any uh, sense of, of frustration of it n not happening, you will actually begin to bring it into your experience much more easily and much more quickly, quickly, or that or something even better. And so when you set an image or an intention for something, don't get locked into thinking it has to be specifically that form in that way. Set the intention and then release it to the universe to provide the good in the way that's highest and best for you. Stay with the desire, stay with the visualizing, whatever you want to do, but don't get into feeling like that's, it has to be that way. Make sense? That's to me giving way. You're giving way. When I, um, I remember uh, <laughs> Noah, you know, was out on the water for 40 days and 40 nights. And, you know, he uh, sent out a dove to see whether there was land out there. And Noah was out waiting and looking and, the dove came back and it had an olive branch in its mouth. And Noah took the olive branch and threw it down and said, darn, that's not land. <laughs> so my point about that is that sometimes we put our desires and intentions out there of what we think we want, and if it doesn't show up in exactly the same, the right way that we think it's supposed to show up, we discount it. 
but we need to recognize that those are simply little signs. When we get something that looks like what it is that we're desiring, recognize that those are just simply signs that what we're desiring is even closer than we realize. And continue to hold the awareness without the, the fear or rejection of the good that comes to us in whatever form it comes to us. Make sense? So the, the fourth way is when we're stuck, we find ourselves stuck in some way, and we want to move into the energy of giving up. Now, when you hear giving up, many of you may react and say, well, that just means we quit, right? And I have a different idea about what giving up means. I do feel that giving up does mean surrender. But surrender is not necessarily quitting. In many ways, surrender is a very active thing. It's this very active activity. And when I think about giving up, I'm not talking about laying down and not and quitting. When I think about giving up, I'm thinking about giving up. Giving it up to the divine. It's kind of related to giving way in many ways. It's very connected in many ways to giving away. But I think there's even more awareness to think about the idea of giving up. And so it really is the whole let go and let God thing. But I think there's a real value in giving up, and that is giving to whatever is feeding us from a higher place, giving to whatever is serving us in a way that is bringing us into a higher energy and consciousness. You know, when you start focusing your attention toward the divine, the divine responds. When you focus your energy and attention toward the divine in a way that you are sending out positive energy toward the divine, the divine reflects back to you that kind of energy. Now, don't get me wrong, the divine is always reflecting to you the good, always reflecting to you benefits, but in a sense, you might say that you're opening up a channel for you to be able to see that good more clearly and to be open to receiving that good more fully. You're opening a window of heaven, you might say, to be able to allow the flow of spirit to come in and to and through you in a way that perhaps you had not done before. And so when we're in a place of feeling stuck, ask yourself the question, what is it that I need to give up? Now, the ego doesn't like that word. Have you noticed that? The ego really doesn't like this idea of giving up because the ego really likes being in charge and thinking it has the answers or if it doesn't have the answers, it'll figure them out. But the more we can move into the energy of giving our, our love, our joy, our energy, our substance even for that matter, into that of spirit, we're opening the universe to pour more in and through us. And that brings us to the fifth way of the fifth G of getting unstuck, and that is to give of. You can bet that if I am stuck in some way that I've stopped giving of myself in some way. Either I'm not giving of my time, I'm not giving of my energy, I'm not giving of my attention, serving tea, you know. You know how to get an elephant out of your backyard? I know you have to, I've told this one before. You get a, you know, that was simple to get an elephant out of your backyard. You stop serving it tea. <laughs> you stop giving it time, energy, and attention. You stop feeding it, basically. That's true of any challenge or difficulty you have in your life, whether it be an elephant or a mouse or a whatever place that you feel stuck. You stop serving a tea, and you start serving tea to whatever it is that you want to bring more into your life. You start giving time, energy, and attention. Energy and attention really has to do also with our finances, with our love, See, when we hold back the flow, it's like damming up a stream. It becomes a pool, and it becomes stagnant in our consciousness. And so our work is to really be able to shift our energy and our awareness from the three C's to the five G's. 
So ask yourself the question this week, where am I? Am I in one of the three C's with this circumstance or situation? Or am I in, a, am I in one of the five G's? And how can I move more into that 5G energy? How can I move more into the energy of flow, more into the energy of giving? If we're moving into the energy of giving, we are automatically moving out of the energy of getting. And let me say just a brief moment about that. See, the energy of getting comes from a place and a consciousness of not enough, doesn't it? So when we focused our energy and attention on trying to get, we're automatically telling the universe, I don't have enough. But if we want to really experience more of the blessings of spirit, move our energy into the energy of giving. Find ways for you to share, to give, even if it uh, is a little thing. Even if you um, take, uh, one of the things, my favorite things to do is put water bottles in the back of my my car, and when I'm driving around, I see somebody on the street, I give them a bottle of water because they need water. I can assure you, in this climate, they definitely need water. So it's a way of giving. I don't have millions of dollars that I can give to every homeless person in the world, but I can give something. I can give something. You can always find something to give, and it's the very act and the energy of giving that helps to generate more of that experience of awareness of the possibility of good in our lives. So I want to close this morning with words from a, a poem. Actually, it's not a poem. It's a song. How many of you are familiar with the wonderful uh, singer-songwriter David Roth? I love David Roth. I'm not talking about David Lee Roth, the rock and roll guy. Although, <laughs> he's pretty cool, too. I like him, too. But um, I'm talking about David Roth, who's a wonderful spiritual songwriter. And he's got a song out that's called Till You Give It Away. And I'll read you just a, the chorus of this song. He says, Hiding your heart is a fool's game to play. So is gathering love just to lock it away. What you have in your heart wasn't put there to stay. It's not love till you give it away. It's not love till you give it away. So this week, that's your homework, my homework or this week and probably the rest of our lives, moving out of the places where we're stuck, moving into the places of the five Gs. So let's move into our uh, meditation time. We'll have a little music, and then we'll have meditation. So just breathe into your heart space as we... stuck or not. Notice whether your breath is constricted. If there's a tightness in you in some place, in some way. If you find yourself holding your breath at different times, you can bet you're in the energy of constriction. So just be open to allowing the breath to flow in gently and to flow out gently. Breathing in. And breathing out. Breathing into the heart space. Expand the heart energy and breathing out, I send forth my attention, my energy, my love, divine love, the 
one love. Breathing in, I breathe in divine life. And breathing out, I allow that life to flow through me. As activity, as action, those things that are mine to do. Breathing in, I accept and receive the divine flow. And I don't hold my breath. I let that divine flow breathe out through me. Allow the breath of spirit, the inspiration of spirit, to flow in and through me. I let go of the need to complain or constrict or to cut off. I trust and know there is an amazing abundance of all that is needed. And I send forth whatever I wish to experience more of. simple flow, giving and receiving. I release the past. I give up my heart to the divine. I trust give way and I give of the grace that God is in my heart and my mind and my life thank you thank you thank you blessed spirit take another nice deep breath Let your eyes and heart be open. Take one more nice deep breath and move around a little bit. Stretch. And just let a feeling of gratitude come into your heart for the divine flow through you. And so it is. <laughs>